Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. The topic that I'll be speaking on today is the significance of the month of Ramzan. As we all know, the month of Ramzan is approaching and in Islam it is considered to be a very holy month. So we must understand what the month of Ramzan and fasting in the month of Ramzan stand for. So uh, as we know that fasting is one of the pillars, one of the five pillars of Islam. But it also must be understood and it must be borne in mind that uh, the reward which God gives for following or observing these five pillars of Islam is not meant only if we observe the outward form or the outward uh, ritual of these five pillars. We have to observe the inner spirit also. So reward by God will be granted to us only if we fulfill all the conditions of adhering to or observing these five pillars and that is observing them not only in terms of the form but also in terms of the inner spirit. So today we'll be focusing entirely on the spirit of fasting and let me begin by a verse of the Quran which mentions fasting. The verse has come in chapter 2 Al-Baqarah. It says, believers Fasting has been prescribed for you, just as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may guard yourselves against evil. This is a very important verse of the Quran and it tells us that uh, throughout history, every community of every messenger observed fasting or to every community, the practice of fasting had been prescribed. So this attaches a lot of importance to fasting. When we fast, or when a believer fasts, he includes himself in the historical spiritual process of which all the messengers, all prophets, all pious people in history were part of. And this gives immense spiritual sol solace that we are becoming part of such a spiritual divine process which has been continuing from history and it will continue forever. Now, uh, let me begin by uh, what the Prophet of Islam, upon whom we peace, said about fasting. So when the month of fasting was approaching, the Prophet of Islam delivered a sermon to his companions. And he said, when he saw the moon of the month of Ramzan, he said, O oh Lord, make this month a month of peace and a month of security for all of us. So this is the spirit with which a believer enters the month of Ramzan. He has to take a pledge to be a peaceful member of society. He has to develop or inculcate in himself peaceful virtues, peaceful ideals and be a completely peaceful personality. So this is a pledge that a believer takes when he sees the moon or incites the moon of the month of Ramzan. Then uh, we all know that uh, the fasting begins by partaking of what is called sehri, which is the meal which believers or Muslims take before sunrise. And sehri has a lot of importance. The Prophet Muhammad, upon whom we peace, has said that sehri is a blessed food. So you all must partake of it. You all must eat sehri. And sehri uh, uh, carries a lot of significance because when a believer uh, takes sehri, then it is a kind of help from God for him. Because throughout the day, he has to stay without food, without drink. He has to remain hungry and thirsty. But God has given the allowance to begin fasting by having a meal. So sehri is basically telling us that we believers, if God tells us to do something difficult, because uh, fasting and abstaining from food and drink is indeed difficult. It is something which requires a lot of resolve. So when God asks you to do something so difficult, he also gives you concession. He also arranges for ease in the process of the command that he has asked you to fulfill. So when you face any such command which God has asked you to fulfill, when you're asked to uh, act upon an injunction of God which appears to be apparently or seemingly difficult to you or too heavy on you, 
you must trust in god have tawakkul and proceed to fulfill that commandment which god has asked you to fulfill because he'll surely sustain you through the process he'll surely give his extraordinary help to you in, in the entire process so that's about sehri and the significance of sehri now uh, what is the main purpose of fasting why at all we are asked to fast now the word the arabic word for fasting is called saum and saum in itself carries a profound meaning it's it means uh, uh, to hold yourself to stop yourself or to abstain yourself or refrain from something so that is the real essence of fasting fasting basically helps us to uh, trains us to uh, develop the temperament of patience of tolerance of forbearance because life in this world is a life wherein we'll have a lot of problems challenges hardships so unless we have these virtue virtues of patience and tolerance we won't be able to lead life peacefully and positively so fasting trains us to be positive and peaceful so the prophet of islam has said when a fasting person is abused by someone he replies may peace be upon you i am a fasting person so i will not respond to you with a similar abuse i will not respond to you in a like manner so this tells us that fasting uh, is a kind of abstinence not merely from food and drink abstaining from food and drink are symbolic forms of abstinence the real abstinence the real spirit which fasting wants to inculcate in you is to abstain from all undesirable activities all immoralities and all negative attitude and behavior you have to abstain from everything so fasting basically develops a shock absorber in a person you all know that cars have shock absorbers so what does this shock absorber do it takes in the shock itself when it faces something which faces an obstacle on its path when the car faces an obstacle or a hurdle on its path and it absorbs the shock in its own self and it doesn't allow the passenger to feel the shock so that is what fasting basically does it enables a person to absorb the shocks of life in his own being and not allow his emotions to be manifested in an uncontrolled and unrestrained way to people outside so fasting puts a check on a person and helps him develop a disciplined and responsible life that is the life a believer is supposed to live and that is the kind of mind or the character which the quran has come to instill in people another very important aspect of fasting is that as i just read in this verse of the quran in chapter al bakara it states that fasting has been uh, has been prescribed for you so that you develop taqwa taqwa means to guard yourself against something or to uh, develop this uh, god consciousness or the feeling of being accountable to god so and in a uh, modern terminology we can say taqwa is spiritual sensitivity becoming spiritually sensitive so on normal days we lead our lives as material human beings we eat we drink and we are almost an expression of the saying eat drink and be merry but what fasting does is that it prevents us from leading life in that way rather when we are away from food and drink during in the entire day we are forced to think that we have something more greater to fulfill our lives have a higher purpose a more meaningful purpose our lives are not meant to be just wasted in eating drinking and being merry so that sensitivity that spiritual sensitivity is uh, awakened in us through the act of fasting so fasting is extremely important in that sense it makes a person realize that he has to lead his life in a, uh, in a way that develops him spiritually and intellectually he is not just a physical material human being so basically fasting is a way to uh, awaken and enliven the spiritual side to your personality mm-hmm. and another important thing which must be said when it comes to fasting is that 
fasting is not only abstaining from food and drink fasting is abstaining from all evil activities all things which god wants you to abstain from as the quran says and the prophet of islam upon whom we peace has said that the quran is uh, was the uh, sorry the uh, quran says that the quran was revealed in the month of ramzan the quran began to be revealed to the prophet of islam in this month so the quran and fasting in the month of ramzan have a deep association and that is when you're fasting and you're away from all distractions and material pursuits you have a very heightened kind of focus and concentration on the spiritual side as i said so you can read the quran with a lot of attention with a lot of concentration and that is the moment to understand the true message of the quran to rediscover its teachings and its tenets to reapply it to your lives so fasting during the month of fasting in ramzan we have to we have to read the quran at least once from beginning to the end to understand its message and also to resolve that we will uh, share it the wisdom of the quran with people so as the quran says that it was revealed in the month of ramzan so fasting is a kind of a practical acknowledgement to god for revealing this guidance for humanity so the quran is something which tells us about the truth about the reality of this world about death about hereafter so all these are grave issues and the quran guides us on these grave and serious matters so when we fast we are in a way practically acknowledging god almighty for having revealed this enormous immense blessing on humanity through the prophet muhammad on whom be peace so that is the uh, the connection between the quran and uh, fasting in ramzan so we have to read it more and more understand it uh, deeply contemplate on it and apply it to our lives lastly i'd like to just speak uh, briefly on iftar iftar means breaking of the fast and it carries a lot of significance because when you break your fast that is a moment when you partake of food after an entire day of being uh, after an entire day of abstaining from food and drink so that moment is so special when you eat when you drink after an entire month of oh sorry entire day of thirst entire day of hunger when you eat you are overwhelmed with feeling of gratefulness gratitude thankfulness to god you just want to you're just subdued by feelings of of gratitude to your lord because these blessings for which you generally take which you generally take for granted are blessings which if are taken away from us will be rendered totally helpless totally unable to do anything at all so these blessings when we take partake of them after a long period without them we realize how much our our creator has blessed us and how much we are nothing without our creator without the blessings that he has endowed us so we are filled with feelings of uh with emotions and feelings subtle feelings for your lord which which you do not have on regular days so i can say that i fa when i fast i wait for this moment when i can have this special feeling of connection to god special feeling of being overwhelmed by overwhelmed of uh, realizing what god is how god has really blessed us this is the moment which moves me a lot when i am fasting so this is uh, what fasting was about and the prophet of islam has said some very special prayers uh, while he used to break his fast for example he said that oh god i fasted for your sake and i have broken my fast with the sustenance that you have provided and another uh, prayer of the prophet was that oh god my uh, thirst has been quenched and my nerves have been refreshed and god willing the reward for fasting will be established with my lord so these are some prayers which every believer recites when he fasts and it's important to know the spirit behind these these prayers and fasting therefore is something which is all about connecting to god 
turning to God in a way in which you never had turned to God before. So this is what I had to say about the significance of fasting and we can now take questions. Miss, Mr. Muzambil Razak has said, how do we know upon which night Lelatul Qadr falls? So as the Prophet of Islam has clearly told us that we cannot determine with exactitude on which night the Lelatul Qadr falls. We have to look for uh, the odd nights on, in the last 10 days of Ramzan and try to understand on which night Lelatul Qadr has, has, is, is, has come. We cannot determine it or we cannot say it with precision. That's the, that's the way that Lelatul Qadr is about. So what we have to do in the last 10 days of Ramzan is that we have to increase our supplication to God, increase our connectivity to God and increase our, our reading of the Quran so that we are filled with spiritual feelings and we are filled with the fact that God has bestowed great mercy on us. Miss Maryam Khan has asked, how, how do we stay active while fasting? So you can stay active while fasting if you always engage your mind into some activity. And the best way is to think and contemplate about the Quran, about the deeper truths of life. You study, you read, you offer worship and you connect yourself with God. So if you engage your mind in something productive or something constructive, surely you will be able to uh, remain active. But if you are not engaging yourself in anything which makes your mind active, then you will become dull and you won't be able to do anything. Miss Ebna Rushad has asked, Some students study until Sehri, pray Fajr and then go to sleep. What is your point of view? So if you are sleeping during the entire day when you are uh, fasting, then you won't be able to really benefit from the spirit of fasting. Because fasting has come to make us feel hungry and make us feel thirsty. So that we are subdued by a realization of the blessings of the Creator. So if we sleep and we just uh, shut our minds and shut our bodies, then we won't be able to feel the real essence of fasting. We won't feel hungry. We won't feel thirsty. We won't be thinking and contemplating or reading the Quran, which is a huge, a very important thing we have to do during Ramzan. So it's important to remain awake during that period and be active during that period and try to connect more and more with God. So that's a very special period and we cannot let go of it by simply sleeping away. Mr. Muzammil Yaman has said, during Ramzan, <coughs> while fasting, I sometimes get very angry and feel very sleepy. How should, should I manage these? So one of the very important things which you have to remember is that when you're fasting, you're fasting for the sake of God. So uh, if for the sake of God, Maulana Vahiduddin Khan has explained very beautifully, that if you fast for the sake of God, what does it mean? It means that if God asks you to refrain from something which is your necessity, that is eating and drinking, you will accept it. You will submit to God's will and you will leave it. So we have to develop our minds. We have to train ourselves to let go of things which God thinks are un undesirable. So in God's uh, sight, anger is undesirable. So we have to train ourselves to not be angry however much we feel that we have to rent, lend, uh, rent out our anger. So even if we feel like renting out our anger, we have to control our emotions. So fasting is all about training ourselves so that even if something is undesirable for us, even if something is against our inclinations, against our tendencies, we should try our utmost to do it. We should have tawakkul in God, we should trust God and we should allow ourselves or make ourselves follow the course which God wants us to follow. So it's all about training your mind, it's all about thinking and it's all about 
increasing your spiritual sensitivity. Mr. Arif Hussain has said, how can we do dawa work in Ramzan? The way of doing dawa work in Ramzan is that uh, everything is available to you in the form of the internet and every uh, all books and all videos, articles, lectures, everything is available on the internet. So first of all, you have to prepare, you have to prepare yourself and you have to prepare your mind to do dawa work. And when, when you, once you're able to do that, you should use the internet, you should use the modern means of communication to reach out to people because you don't need to even personally come in contact with someone. You don't have to uh, arrange for a one-to-one -one interaction or a seminar or a lecture in a lecture hall. You can simply by the click of a, of a button, you can share your ideas and share your thoughts, engage with people in a creative way. So it's all about developing your creativity when it comes to dawa work. So if you really have the concern for dawa work, you'll be able to find ways, you'll be able to develop solutions and you'll be able to arrive at very creative ways of approaching people. So it's all about having the concern for dawa work. And since in the month of Ramzan, we are asked to read the Quran more and more. We understand the message of the Quran and once we understand the message with depth, we develop a great desire in ourselves to share this message with people. And once you're reading the Quran during the month of Ramzan, every day you develop a deeper desire or a greater desire to share it with people because you understand the wisdom of the Quran and you definitely want to share it with people. So Ramzan is actually a month in which your desire to do dawa work increases or should increase many fold. Mr. Riyaz Bhatt has asked, what is the benefit and importance of etikaf in the last 10 days of Ramzan? So etikaf is going to a mosque or isolating yourself for the last 10 days of Ramzan that you can focus in a more uh, concentrated way without there being any distraction, without there being any kind of diversion for your mind, you sit in the, in the mosque or you sit somewhere in isolation and you ponder more and more about God, you try to think more and more about the realities of life, you read the Quran with contemplation or the dabur or the fakur. And this is a moment wherein you can really purify your mind, your thoughts, you should introspect yourself in this period because this is a period wherein you have no material distractions. So your focus will be heightened in this period, period or your level of concentration will be very, very high in this period. So this is when you have to uh, read the Quran more and more. You'll be able to understand it and you'll be able to also know where you are lacking, what all shortcomings you have and what all mistakes you are making in life and how to improve your uh, yourself, improve or mend your ways. And this is a moment wherein you can especially come very close to God. Because generally we people are often engrossed in other than God, something other than God. It could be our work, it could be a, uh, our daily routine, it could be our, it could be another human being. So we are often so distracted by things which are other than God. And etikaf is something which takes us away from all things which are other than God and focuses us entirely on God. So it's a very special period and it has to be utilized to the full. Mr. A. Muhyuddin is saying, how should we make Ramzan successful for ourselves? How do we know that we have made it a success? This is an important question and it must be understood that the 30 day training period which fasting in the month of Ramzan gives us is something which uh, should continue even after fasting has got over. So if you abstain from evil, if you abstain from negativity, immorality during the month of fasting, 
but you do not remain in that state after fasting that means that your fasting is not successful so to make it a success you have to develop a psychology a temperament of leading a disciplined life a principled life round the year round the year you should keep the spirit of fasting alive in you you should live as a person who is who abstains from all undesirable things all evil things you should develop self restraint so once you're able to develop these virtues in yourself that will determine that you have actually made fasting successful for yourself miss saba sheikh has asked molana wahiduddin khan saab talks about the spirit of ramzan how can i develop it the spirit of ramzan as i was explaining is of abstinence and here abstinence does not mean merely abstaining from food and drink so to develop the spirit of ramzan we must understand that we should not focus too much on the uh, form of ramzan in the sense people during the month of ramzan make elaborate arrangement of food and drink so in effect they make the whole month of fasting a distraction for themselves so the month which has come to make them focus on god and spirituality is rendered purposeless because they end up diverting themselves in something very material and physical so you have to focus more on focus less on the material side of it focus less on food and drink and focus a lot on introspecting upon yourself you have to understand what kind of human being what kind of a person or personality you are developing what kind of a person are you growing as in this world are you spiritually sensitive are you somebody who has a connection with god somebody who has moments when he has subtle feelings for god so these are the things which you develop when you uh, focus more on the spiritual side of fasting and it can be developed more and more by thinking more and more by reading the quran reading the quran is extremely important and this this is why the ramzan has been called shahrul quran so molana waiduddin khan saab also says that each one of you should read the entire quran from beginning to the end at least once during this entire period of fasting and that in itself will be sufficient to develop in you the spirit of fasting Uh, Mr Sayyed Umar has asked during lockdown we will not be able to pray tarawih prayers so can we pray tarawih at home that's right during lockdown we are asked not to go outside and uh, pray in congregation we have to maintain social distancing and self isolate ourselves so we have to abide by these guidelines given by the administration and by health experts and all we can do is pray at home pray tarawi at home the essence of tarawi is to do something uh, to do worship or perform worship in an extra way to go ahead and perform more worship for the sake of god so you all know that when you love a human being or when you have a strong affection for a human being you will always want to do something extra for that person you will want to do something more for that person so this is the essence of tarawi you do when you have strong affection for god you want to do perform more worship you want to observe worship more and more you want to you would have a feeling of praying to god more remembering god in the moments of solitude more often so that is the essence of tarawi mr javed ahmed has said what is the importance of iftar the importance of iftar as i said is that it's a very special moment it's a it's a moment wherein you take food and you take water uh, from which you had been abstaining throughout the day so this moment is a very 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 extraordinary moment it is when you are filled with feelings of thankfulness to god in a way in which you are not 
before or when you are having food and drink on a regular basis. So this is a very very important time and this is when you must focus a lot on praying to God, seeking God's forgiveness and also uh, asking God or requesting God to accept your fasting, accept the fast that you had kept for his sake. So this is a very very important period, a very special moment which only somebody who has fasted and when he has broken his fast can understand. This is a moment when you feel that food and water which you really do not even consider as something worth thinking are so so important that without them you are rendered absolutely nothing, you are rendered absolutely useless. So this is the enormity with which you understand or realize or recognize the blessings of, the, of food and water at the time of iftar. Miss, Miss, Miss Fida Hussain has asked, why is fasting compulsory for, for Muslims? So the Quran says that those of you who find themselves in the month of fasting should fast and God says that fasting is better for you if you only knew. And there is some concession for people who are unhealthy or who have diseases or who are traveling to not fast. And if they can fast at a time other than Ramzan, they are asked to complete their fasting at that time. So why it is compulsory and why God says in the Quran that fasting is better for you if you only knew is because fasting has enormous benefits. Fasting is something which spiritually revivifies your soul. It awakens you and it brings you so close to God in a way that nothing else brings you. So to uh, have these benefits, to enjoy these benefits, to be able to partake of all this, uh, God says in the Quran that you must fast. So this is the spirit of fasting which is most important and for this purpose the Quran says that believers should fast and for this purpose fasting had been prescribed for all communities for throughout history. So this is why uh, we have to fast and fasting is something which develops in us the spirit to lead life as responsible people, to lead life as people whose actions and whose deeds will be pleasurable to God. So this is a training course through which you are made to go through and it makes you a person who is spiritually enlightened, a person who becomes subservient to God and a person who understands how to submit himself to God even when the situation is very difficult. So these are very special qualities and this is why believers have been asked to fast. Mr. Yasir Hassan has asked, according to a hadith, Satan is chained, during, is chained during the month of Ramzan. Yet we see a lot of evil around us. So what does the hadith mean? So yes, there is a hadith that Satan is chained during the month of Ramzan. But it doesn't mean that Satan is physically chained and all the, uh, all the satanic activities have been put a hold to. This is not the meaning of this hadith. It means rather this hadith is with reference to an individual person who is fasting. He inculcates in himself the true spirit of fasting and he uh, reads the Quran. He comes very close to God. He develops a strong bond with God. And all these things, this entire process through which he goes during the day when he is fasting, actually prevents satanic influence on him. So this hadith is with reference to an individual who inculcates the spirit of fasting, who abstains himself, who develops self-restraint and therefore he is somebody on whom Satan does not act or Satan is ineffective in, 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 when it comes to influencing that particular person. So this hadith is not about somebody who is fasting in the sense of not eating food and drink but who does not inculcate the real spirit of fasting. So for that person, he will be open to Satan influencing him and he will be open to developing negative thoughts, he will be open to doing evil, he will be open, open to uh, doing things which are unjust and undesirable in God's eyes. 
So, this hadith is a very important hadith and it is with respect to especially that person who has actually gone through the training course of Ramzan, imbibed it in himself and who is practically acting upon it. Mr. Amir Sheikh has said, what is the social benefit or impact of fasting? This is a good question because the Prophet of Islam upon whom be peace has said that fasting is a month of compassion and fasting is a month of sympathy and philanthropy. So we know that the Prophet of Islam used to increase his uh, philanthropy uh, and his act of charity to a great extent during the month of fasting. And the reason why he used to do this is because, and the reason why believers have been enjoined to do this is because during the month of fasting, what happens is that a person feels utterly helpless. Even if he be rich, even if he be very powerful, he be very strong, he feels totally helpless, he feels totally fragile and he comes to a state wherein he is totally cut to size. So at that moment, a believer, any person who is fasting understands what true, what being needy is, what being a person who requires the help of others is. And because he goes through that state with a lot of intensity, it develops in him a lot of compassion and mercy for people. And therefore, he starts doing acts of charity to a very great extent. He understands that just as he has become so helpless when the blessings of God were taken away from him, there are people out there who are helpless. There are people out there who are in need of his help. There are people out there who don't have resources as he has. So he develops a strong consciousness, a strong uh, urge to share whatever benefits, whatever blessings God has given us with the poor, with the people who are uh, in need, with the people who are in need of help. So that is uh, an enormous impact, which uh, an enormous social impact or social benefit that fasting has on a believer in society. Mr. Sultan Chan Sheikh has said, earlier we did etikaf in the mosque, but due to the lockdown, we have to stay at home now. So can we do etikaf at home? Yes, due to the lockdown, we have to stay at home. We cannot go against the prescription of lockdown since the guideline of lockdown because uh, it is a matter of health emergency. So we have no option but to accept it. And the only alternative we have is to stay at home and to do etikaf at home. The real uh, uh, essence of etikaf is to isolate yourself from all distractions, from all material things, from all diversions and uh, all things that lead you astray and to focus in a very concentrated, very special way on spirituality, on developing yourself, your inner being, in doing your tazkiyah, your purification of your uh, inner being and remembering God more and more. This is the essence of etikaf and it can be done at home if you uh, can isolate yourself at a place and uh, focus more and more on the divine and focus more on more and more on the spiritual side of things. So this was the last question for today. Tomorrow also I will be touching on the spirit of Ramzan and the significance of Ramzan and I will be also taking questions on that topic. So thank you for today.